wanted to do a video on how to remove an instrument cluster on a BMW E46. One of the first things that you want to do is go ahead and lower the steering wheel and pull it all the way out using the release. Pull it all the way out and make sure it's all the way down. Then you can go ahead and relock it and that's going to give you enough space and clearance to actually remove the instrument cluster. Now if you take a look at the top of the instrument cluster you're going to see two little screws, two little torque screws right here and right here and those are a T15 and just remove those two screws. A lot of times it doesn't take that much to crack these free And like I said, it's a T15, and it's only these two here. Okay, those two removed, just going to put them aside. Now you see this upper lip right here. So a lot of times you can just reach in and grab it to separate it. Sometimes you do have to use like a flathead screwdriver because of heat it can bond a little bit to the, the dash up here and as you can see it's just going to pull forward a little bit. This is going to separate and then lifts up. I'm just going to walk this right out and that's going to give me access to the two plugs on the back. I have a white one on this one and a black plug. So with it resting just like this, I can actually come back here and the way you take these off is there's a little push tab on top and then there's a tab right here. So you have to push on this tab and then this is a slider clip. Once you, you get that uh, tab there pushed down, you're going to go ahead and slide this back which is going to lift out the connector. They call this the SKE style connector and then it's going to slide out. Now when I go back on, if I can line this up here, okay, I'm going to just use the connector and I just give it a push and you can see that slides back and I just push that back to lock it. So I'm going to take this one out. Now if my connector goes back this way, it's never going to go back in. You have to remember to slide it all the way forward when you do your reinstallation. So I'm going to do that same thing to the other connector. Just the other connector. Push down on the tab. Slide it back. And then I can just go ahead and pull this connector right out. I'm going to do some voltage checks too in case your instrument cluster isn't working to check for power and ground. This I can actually just slide right out to the side now. Put that up like this. Okay. And now I have access to my new my two plugs. That are my signals and power supply and ground for my instrument cluster. This is the back of the instrument cluster right here. You can see it's all an enclosed unit. The clicker for the blinkers are actually integrated into into the instrument cluster so I've actually I ran into uh, an issue at work where I, I borrowed my instrument cluster and brought it in because the blinkers would flash on one side and not click and then on the other side it wouldn't click at all but it would work outside the vehicle plugged my instrument cluster in and uh, worked right away so it was a quick verification that it was internal in the instrument cluster now for a lot of my electrical testing I actually like to use this airbag wiring harness right here that you can purchase at a BMW shop. Now you can use uh, other pins that fit inside these connectors but these pins fit really well. You can see this is the male style pin and let me just look at the part number real quick for this in case you want to look into purchasing this. I believe it be 911 8086. If you gave a BMW dealer that number, I believe they should be able to cross-reference this. This has the male side pins on one end, 
and the female side pins on the other end. And this is an airbag repair harness, but it just works really good for if I want to go ahead and check one of these pins, I can go ahead and slide it right in there without any kind of effort because this is the same style pin. So I can go ahead and probe any single print pin for the instrument cluster. And this is kind of a generic size, so there's going to be a lot of other components that you can use to also go ahead and check things out here. So first thing I want to do is uh, check my power supply. Say my instrument cluster isn't working, I'm going to check the power supply and ground. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this connector. I'm going to show you how easy it is so you can actually see what you're looking at right here. So on the back side of the connectors there's going to be a little tab and you really only have to pry that tab over to the side like this with a little screwdriver apply some back pressure and slide this housing right off. Now you do want to keep track of uh, which housing is which actually in this case you can't really swap them so you don't really have to worry but in most cases you should just be conscious of it so I'm going to go ahead and slide that out put that down and this is what the pin housing looks like. Now each one of these little pins comes out actually pretty easily. They have a little tiny locking tab. Sorry, so you can see a little tiny locking tab right here. Let's see if I can get a shot of that. Right in those right in these parts right here is a little tiny locking tab where if you press that down you can slide that out. Now, hopefully I have something I can use. A nice sharp pick works really well. Most of the picks I have at home I broke the tips off of doing different repairs so let me see if I can do this for you. Alright let's see if this is a position that I can get this and record it. I'm kinda of hugging the camera here. So if I put a little bit of pressure on this pin and go ahead and push that tab down I can go ahead and slide that pin partially out. Now it does catch right in here as well that's why you need that sharp pick so you push back there as well and the pin is removed. That simple. So it locks here Let me put this where you can see it better so it locks here push it back it'll get stuck here push that pin down again this is that locking tab it slides right out and you can see that it's that same female style connector they do have like a little locator on it on some of these so when you go to put them back in and you know, if I tried to do it sideways it's not gonna work go ahead and, go ahead and slide this back into place like so and it'll lock in and then make sure it's secure and that's how you could remove any of these pins on either side if you wanted to check or replace a pin and there's a lot of uh, connectors that on BMWs that work just like this now for my instrument cluster that black connector has all of my power supplies so I'm gonna check pins 4, 5, and 6 which are these three right here you can count back you know, one, two, three, four. And the color codes on these, you can see. Whoa. Alright, so one is red, yellow, white, and that's the first one, pin four, and that's fed from fuse 43. And then my second one, pin five, is a green and blue wire, and that's fed from fuse 34 and then I have pin 6 which is a violet and yellow wire and that's fed from fuse 10. Now pin 4 should be power all the time pin 5 should be power with terminal 15 on that's with the key on and pin 6 should be with accessory on. So I have my voltmeter set up here alright hopefully I can finagle both things in one in one uh, shot here and see the voltmeter I'm going to check that uh, first pin 4 which is the red yellow white I should have 12 volts which I have 12.32 ok 
Okay, now my next one I would expect with my key off to have zero volts, and then my next one again zero volts. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the key in. I'm going to do, let's see, so let's do terminal R first, which is pin six. So let's see, that's accessory position. My radio is on, okay. So I should have power at uh, pin six, which if this four, five, and six, that would be this one right here. Yep. And no power, remember that's terminal 15, key on, I'm only an accessory at pin five, which is the green and blue, fuse 34. So if I go all the way key on, now I should have power at this uh, middle wire right here. And there it is, 11.95. Now another wire you should check if you're having an instrument cluster problem would be your ground, which is pin one, which is just a brown wire. Now you could put power to it and check it to ground and you should see 12 volts it's actually a really good test or you could use ohms to check continuity to ground that's what i'm going to do for this test I'm shut my key off because i should always have a good ground regardless if my key's on all right and my other lead is going to ground so i'm going to go ahead and check pin one that beep is actually denoting that I do have continuity. And you know what, that's actually pretty high, but the reason for that is I'm using the, a door ground over here and it's relatively loose. So let's see, that's a little bit better. I wiggled it a little bit, 11.6, still high. I'd like to see like three ohms, but again, I'm not using the best ground um, for that. So let's see, if I can finagle this again, if I can go to my ground here. Uh, one sec. Alright, I'm struggling and I haven't even used these, these pins yet. So I'm going to go and put one in the ground. Oh, my pin just slid out. Get back in there. I must have pushed on it when I was checking it and it slid right out. You're checking for that usually when you have an issue like this if you had a backed out pin. So I go, went ahead and put that in my ground and I'm going to go ahead and put this in pin 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and that's my main power supply. So now I can just use the other ends here to go ahead and check with my voltmeter. Meter up here. Get my two leads. My neighbor would choose right now to mow his lawn, so I keep having to stop every time he does a pass. All right, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and just take this and put it on one, and I'm switched over to voltage again, and then right here to my ground, and I'm actually checking the entire circuit through the main power and the ground, and I have 12.23, so I know I'm, I'm good there. Even though I had high ohmage, that was just because of my poor connection over here in the door I was using. So if my instrument cluster is not working correctly and it's powering up, um, or rather it's not powering up, and I have voltage to my connector and a good ground, you've basically proven that your instrument cluster is the failure. I'm going to go ahead and take these pins back out. I know that my powers and grounds are good. My cluster is working, of course, so I did expect that. But obviously you always want to check your fuses. Uh, for this E46, um, it was fuse 10, fuse 34, and fuse 43. And Let's see, pin four was fuse 43, pin six was fuse 10, and pin five is fuse 34, pin one was your ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a rinse, reinstallation of my instrument cluster. Just gonna push this back, slide this in, and rest it face down like this. I can go ahead and just come right back here and grab my connector 
can hopefully do this semi-blind, but I can see a little bit using the camera. Okay, that's in place. Slide that back. You heard my cluster power on there. Let's get that other connector. Remember, if it ends up sliding back on you, it needs to be forward when you do the installation or you'll never get it into place. Okay, lock that down. Just gonna go ahead and with it tilted downward, just gonna go ahead and slide this back. And actually, they, they usually push right back nice and easy. You wanna make sure it's seated all the way back. These two screws should go in nice and easy. I always like to start these by hand. You should feel them catch. All right, I had to reseat the instrument cluster because you want to try to get everything to line up. There we go, that's better. It wasn't fully seated, so every time I tried to screw in the hole down, it didn't, wasn't quite in the right spot. So if it doesn't seem like it's going in smooth, reposition the instrument cluster. Go ahead and tighten these down. And you can really just tighten these down by hand. You don't have to use any ratchet because they don't need to be super tight. Everything's just plastic here anyway, so they just need to be snug down. Snug one side, then the other. Now, if you use a used instrument cluster, you will get a manipulation dot because the mileage is stored redundantly in the instrument cluster and in the lamp module. So you'll end up with a manipulation dot right here in uh, the mileage. I believe it'll be right underneath the miles, right around this area. You'll have a little dot as to noting that uh, it's not the original cluster. Um, you can use the cluster, it should still work as long as all the options are the same because basically the, the ZCS coding is what they used to call it, now they call it vehicle order. All of the options that your BMW has is stored in your instrument cluster, so is the VIN number. So if you use a used instrument cluster and you go to a dealer and they read out your VIN from your cluster, it's actually going to be from the donor vehicle's instrument cluster. You can can swap in a used cluster for testing purposes as long as you don't drive the vehicle. Uh, the mileages won't match but as long as you don't drive or move the vehicle you can go ahead and, and use it for testing like I did and, and not get a manipulation dot. You might get a dot that will show up when it's plugged into the other car but when you plug it back into yours it should go away. Now if you want to replace your instrument cluster if you buy a new one or one that uh, has had the memory cleared out uh, you could go ahead and plug it in and then it would need to be programmed to your vehicle and it will pull the mileage from the lamp module and match it to your new instrument cluster. But that's really something that the specialty shop would have to do or if you have uh, special programming capabilities with a, an SSS programming station. I hope you find this video helpful. Thanks for watching.